Hey, hey, Tony Gasser here, popping in with a power hour. Now, one of the things that I always have to confront when coaching is forgiveness. This is like probably the second biggest topic after communication. And as you know, you are a human. And hopefully anybody you date or marry is a human. And so therefore, that lets you know every single human is going to do something wrong, is going to make a choice that is a bad choice, an immature choice, a stupid choice, whatever you want to call it. They're going to make a choice that you don't approve of at some point in the relationship. No one that you deal with is going to be perfect. And so that's something you have to understand. And in understanding that, you have to also know what are your deal breakers and what can you live with and this is the importance of setting standards and i'll talk about that in another video before going into a relationship you have to know your standards and know what your deal breakers are you have to know what is non-negotiable so therefore when these things happen you can decide if you're going to stay or if you're gonna go. So here's the thing, in every single relationship, even in my wife and I, 14 years of marriage, you know, we, we happy, we're 100% happy now, but them first two to three years were tough. You getting to know each other, you testing the water, you testing the ground, and, and just like with humans, any and everybody could be spoiled. You know, a man could be spoiled, a woman could be spoiled. And I'm spoiled, my wife's spoiled, but we spoiled in a way that we allow. And when you look at it, and that's why I always, you know, talk about this is not giving a boyfriend husband benefits and not giving a girlfriend wife benefits because we'll get spoiled. And those benefits in another video. But what you have to understand is that when you are offended, when something happens that you don't approve of, that's when you have to have your own process of forgiveness and understanding. And that's when you really have to look within and you have to identify where you are operating from. Because it's a lot of people who forgive everything under the sun, but it's because they've lost their self-worth. They've lost their self-esteem. They've lost their heart. They've been violated, they've been abused, they've been taken advantage of, they've been just totally misused and mistreated throughout their life that they don't know who they are. They don't have any standards. They don't have any boundaries because those things have been stripped from them. And so we see those people who will accept and put up with all kinds of stuff. And to them, it's a relationship. They have someone that they have companionship with. And so that one laugh that they share with their partner, it covers a multitude of sin for them. They may get, you know, in the eye, but they're holding on for that next laugh. That may not come for a week or two, but because they were raised so cold, that this feels like warmth that the the one good day that they have to them outweighs the six bad days and so if they have one good day a week without arguing without being mistreated that fills their bucket because their standards and their requirements are that low and so we've all seen those people hopefully you aren't that person god bless you if you are hopefully you can heal and grow and change and love yourself and find the strength and the self-worth and the self-respect to walk away but this is what we see so when you come into your relationship before you go into a relationship or if you're already in a relationship you need to sit down and get you a piece of paper. Now, if you're going to be watching these power hours, you need to get your notebook. Get your whole notebook because you need to be writing down. So by the end of this, you got a relationship book that you could publish on Amazon. 
So what you need to do is you need to write down every offense that you could think of. Write down every offense that you could think of. Me, I'm not really a writer in the sense of writing stuff down like that. I'm, it's more so in my mind. But I think we need to write it down. And so when you write down, and I'll give you some examples. You write down emotional cheating. So DMing another person. Inboxing another person. Flirting with someone at work having phone conversations with someone in another state in another city someone they can't physically see but they talk they text on the phone they talk on the phone so all of them things may encompass emotional cheating so you may put emotional cheating and then you may break down different types of emotional cheating and then when you do this what you need to do is you want to identify on a scale of one to ten the severity of this action so a one is, eh, it's nothing. A 10 is absolute deal breaker, got to go. One of the worst things in the world. So you have emotional cheating. Then you have, you have physical cheating. You have emotional abuse. You have verbal abuse. And you have physical abuse. So, and sometimes you hear me skip over words. It's just because certain platforms don't want you to use certain words. So understand that you got to read between the lines. And so you have those things and you write down how you rank it. And now based on your ranking, you got to evaluate your ranking. You got to evaluate your ranking because if your ranking is, is if your reference is rooted in pain that you have not healed from then you're going to rank certain things higher than other things that you don't have a reference for so you have to evaluate this so if you were in a relationship and you went through this particular thing and it hurt you really bad it broke you down and you've come out and you haven't healed to the point that you can love as if you've never been hurt before then that thing is going to hurt you more and you're going to rank that higher. So you may say this particular act is a nine or a 10 when the next person who was healed and they're fine, they may say it's a five or a six. So you have to evaluate your reference for your ranking. And this is going to help you understand if you are healed or not, if you need to do some more healing before dealing. And so this where you have this understanding and see the thing about it is now and, and this could go however you want it to go like you can put asking me for a threesome because that's a question that you may be asked how do you rank that i know my wife she's gonna rank that a 10 boy you absolutely crazy and that never crossed my mind to ask her because I see her character. I see her the, her attributes. I know her. So I would never fix my mouth to say, hey, what you think about the whole real? I would never do that. But if a man is if a man doesn't have respect for you and he doesn't have respect for himself and he nasty, he might ask you that question. So if you have not prepared for this particular thing, you're not going to know how to address it, how to handle it. And you might find yourself in the bed with, with a stranger that he done brought home. And so this is also very important, setting your standards, setting your boundaries and evaluating what these different actions, the common actions that you hear about in a relationship. So yelling at you, what is that on a scale of one to 10 for you? Cursing at you calling you out of your name calling you another name um uh, the b word or the n word or whatever kind of derogatory name how does that rank for you lying to you how does that rank for you not coming home how does that rank saying that he or she is going to call you and not calling, not keeping their word. 
So you see what I'm saying? You go through this and you need to process this all the way. Because when you see it in your mind, it won't be as shocking when you see it in real life. But if you don't see it in your mind, then when you see it in real life, it's going to catch you off guard and you may react instead of respond. And so you got to understand this going in. Now, here's the thing. Your personality is what you have a right to. You have a right to your personality. You have a right to your story, to your upbringing. So those things mean something. For me, lying is like a deal breaker, like telling a lie. And for me, it's any type of lie. It's not just like sleeping with somebody else and lying about that because that would be cheating and lying. But it's like, um, did you loan such and such some money? No, I didn't loan anybody no money. But the answer is, yeah, you loaned a hundred dollars and our finances are joint. Our finances are mixed and we, we build and we got goals. We got a saving. If you lie to me about that, that's a nine or a 10 for me because I'm an empire builder. I want to build an empire. I want to build a legacy. I want to create generational wealth. I can't do that if I have a liar. So to me, that's going to rank up there with cheating. Now, cheating going to be worse. Now, nah, cheating going to be worse. So that lie might be an eight and a half, eight, nine. That cheating going to be 10. And I'm going to put 12 on there. But it, it goes both ways. So these are my standards. You have to determine yours. So now when the act happens, now this is where you're able to put in your prescription, your response. So I remember with my wife early on in our relationship, I went, we got into a disagreement. I went to Yale. And when I went to Yale, she put her finger up. She said, don't, don't talk to me like do not talk to me like that. When she caught me right there in that yell, it started me. I'm like, whoa, hold on. Now you finna stop me? You finna put that finger up? And so it caught me right there. And it made me think about my last relationship. I could yell, curse, go off, and just do anything. And she w- would be cool with it. This relationship... My, don't talk to me like that. I said, whoa. So what that did is, it's like, okay, now that's one of the things she don't like. I didn't go all the way through with it because she stopped me in my tracks. And it taught me how to talk to her. That if I want to talk to her, I got to talk room, tone, cool, calm, and collected. Any other type of way, she finna shut down conversation over she gone relationship over then and so that taught me a lesson the same thing you're gonna be in your relationship and your partner may send a flirtatious message to somebody on facebook or instagram and they happen to leave their phone open or they happen to leave their computer open and you see that message so now do you in the relationship or do you implement your plan of action so here's the thing understand the offense first understand the offense and the brevity of the offense i don't know what that uh, word mean but that sounds good right there so we finna, we're gonna see what that means okay All right, that might have won the word, but we're gonna put that right now. Now, so what? So now you understand the offense. Hold on, come on now. Hey, you got to learn. Okay, not not the um brevity. Understand 
the gravity of the offense. Okay, that means the extreme or alarming importance, the seriousness. So you understand the gravity of the offense. This is an English class for you too. So you finna learn some words, but get your dictionary and learn some words. And so you understand the offense, you have your internal ranking for it, and you say, okay, this this a this a one. Like I'm not even finna trip, I'm not finna argue, I'm not finna yell, I'm not finna go to bed mad over this, like, okay, they left the plate on the table. They, they left the, the, the tampon floating in the toilet. They left the dirty drawers, dirty socks on the floor. They didn't make up the bed. They, they gave the car back on E. It's things like that that it may be a pet peeve. It get on your nerves, but it's not enough for you to end the relationship. So you see these range of offenses that can happen. Now you need to have a response. So you need to go through in your mind. Remember, in a time of peace, you prepare for war. You don't, you don't, you don't, get, in, you don't get in the battle and then try to prepare in the midst of it. You got to be prepared ahead of time. That's what my daddy taught me. And so you already prepared for it. So now you have your response. So now you're able to say, hey, can you pick up your plate after you eat? I appreciate Thanks, please. Thanks, management. And you may say it in a way that is kind of direct, serious, playful at the same time versus i'm so sick and tired of your nasty always leaving your uh, 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 plate on stuff now that's a total different response you might be fed up from work you might be fed up from the kids but you just went way off the handle over a plate being left on the table so now you done created an offense so now they offended you with, they offended your pet peeve and now you done flew off the handle and now you done hit one of they deal breakers yelling at them, cursing at them, calling them out their name. So now you're in an all out war now. It, it's on now. So you see, so you have to understand all the different offenses that you're going to face in, in love and relationships. And it could be from A to Z now. It could be from A to Z. And you have to know how you're going to respond. Remember, respond, not react. So now with this here situation, you say, okay, listen, you're going to wait your one to 24 hours and then you finna bring up this here conversation. And let's, one of the most common ones that we will see is, is cheating emotional cheating or physical cheating another common one we will see is emotional abuse um, verbal abuse that's some other common ones we see another one we see is deception lying another one may be manipulation another one may be not keeping their word not being consistent not following through and so these are some of the common things and this at least those you need to have a response for and even physical abuse even though that's not as common in most relationships but it is happening and so you need to have a response for it and what you're going to realize in understanding you know forgiveness in a relationship when you put these things in place, you're actually going to be able to prevent a lot of stuff from happening. So when I went to yell at my wife and she stopped me, this probably was in the first six months of the relationship, maybe first year. When she stopped me, guess what? If I can't yell at her, then I definitely know I can't curse at her. If I can't yell at her and I can't curse at her, then I definitely know I can't be verbally abusive to her. If I can't do those things, then I definitely know I can't be physically. So now, just by stopping the little thing, just by stopping that first behavior, it prevented several other more severe behaviors. And so this is where having standards and boundaries come into play. And... You're going to be mad when I have to do a whole video on that and reiterate this stuff, but it's the way it goes. So by setting this in place, you're going to prevent a lot. 
But here's the thing. It's just like in in baseball, you got three strikes, you know. In basketball, you get five fouls. When you when you look at this, in, in everything, there's a limit. And so in your relationship, you may say, okay, I'm going to give one strike. It's a one strike offense. But you prevent that one strike offense like physical cheating may be a one strike offense but you will prevent that by cutting off the yelling cutting off the cursing cutting off the not being consistent cutting off the lying you can prevent the cheating because now you've sent a message to your partner that he or she knows you're not about no games you ain't finna play the radio so they got to come correct and so with the one offense, I mean, with the one strike offense, then it's game over for that one. Something else you may say, I could do two strikes on that one because that's more of a human flaw, more of a human thing that, that everybody struggle with. I could do two strikes on that one. Something else you may say, I could do three strikes on that one. So for me, coming in, in my relationship, I remember telling my wife, I say, listen, I catch you lying to me three times, we done. But her thing was like little omissions of the truth. Not like just straight blatant or malicious or anything like that type of lies. It was like little small stuff of wanting to be perfect and wanting to um, be a people pleaser. That could lead us to lying. Because we don't want to let nobody down. We want we don't want to, you know, not please somebody. So that could lead us to a lie. You know, for me, coming from being a womanizer, I had my thing was being too flirtatious, you know, being too friendly. So she had to let me know, like, listen, all the hell now, all the hell talking in the Facebook inbox, all the hell DM, all these little text messages with your little female friend, all that got to go. So then I realized, okay, by by her cutting that out, that minimizes the chances of me physically cheating if she cut out the emotional connections. And so this is what you have to understand. You got to know you. You got to know what you about and you have to make this clear to your partner. Like they need to know your deal breakers and by also knowing the precursors. When, when they understand the antecedent behavior that they exhibit before the major behavior, then they realize, okay, wow, he or she ain't playing. Like, my, my person ain't playing with me. And so this is where you have to get to. And understand this. The next thing you have to realize is in a relationship, you have to have a rehabilitation process because you're dealing with a human so unless it's just absolutely egregious i mean it's just the worst then you need to have a re rehabilitation process and so what i mean by that is when this offense happens and from the little to the big so Leaving the plate on the floor, leaving the socks on the floor, leaving the drawers on the floor, leaving the toilet seat up, leaving the tampon on top of the toilet, uh, in, in basket, floating in the toilet, you know, all the different stuff that we hear about happening in relationships. From the little stuff, then you may say, we're going to implement a chore calendar. Like, hey, listen, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the washing and the folding. You good at you know, taking out the trash and changing the air vents, you know. So you may create a chore list. It may be something to where when you around your partner and you see him or her getting undressed, they got a habit of leaving their clothes on the floor, you able two, three times in a row when they getting undressed, say, hey, can you remember to pick up your clothes and put them in the dirty hamper? And now you creating a habit. Now, if you with a slop ball of a partner who was not raised right, you're going to get on their nerves. 
you need to stop all that nagging. It's like, I can't even do nothing. Like, what else you want me to do? Man, I can't even get, my goodness, I ain't even get my shirt all the way off yet. You're going to get on their nerves, but they with you, so they love you. So you remember, communication is okay. You can't you can't worry about that. And I, and I tell my wife, I just tell my wife, I say, listen, don't be afraid of me. Like, she, she not scared of me, but she would act like she was scared of me because she wouldn't speak her mind. I say, you speak your mind. Like, don't, 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 don't sit over there and be in your feelings and have no attitude. If you see me on my phone, you know, and I'm doing something and you want my attention, say, hey, baby, put your phone down. I need to talk to you. I'm like, I'm your husband. You got the right to say that, but don't expect me to just read your mind. Like, speak your mind. Like, have a sense of agency, a sense of ownership in your relationship. And so we have to be able to do that. You got to be able to speak your mind. So, yes, you're dealing with a human. Humans hate criticism. Humans hate criticism. Humans hate to be corrected. Humans hate to be wrong. So you're going to get pushback. You can't allow that pushback to scare you. And that's what we do wrong in a relationship is we allow that pushback to make us suppress our thoughts and feelings. And it's like you're just trying to make your situation, your living situation with your partner, you're just trying to make it a better situation. So you're saying, hey, can you remember to you know, pick up your underwear after you take them off? Can't. And, you know, my wife kept about to drown in the toilet because I would always leave the toilet seat up. And, and you know, it's late at night, you got to use the bathroom. You walking in there in the dark. Next thing you know, you down there with the Ninja Turtles in the sewage because you done fell through there. And so she would come and kind of jokingly say it. But I needed to hear it a few more times, a little more firm. And then eventually it kind of set in. Like, okay, remember put the toilet seat back down, man. Like, what the world? But, you know, being a man, living in your own place, having your own apartment, being in your own dorm room in college, your own apartment bathroom, you get used to just you using your bathroom. So when you get married, that's an adjustment. And vice versa, you know, it happens. And so you have to understand that these are things that need to be said before you even get to the point of having to keep having arguments and then having to keep heal from these arguments and disagreements. And, and then you go from the little all the way up to the big. So in your re rehabilitation plan, what I mean by this is, let's say you catch your partner emotionally cheating in the DM, the direct message. Some people have social media and ask me, what is a DM? It's a direct message. It's the inbox. Let's say you catch a message that's inappropriate. So now, what do you do? What is your rehabilitation process? And so I, let's, I would recommend you, you wait one to 24 hours. You cool, you come in, you collect it. And you, when y'all both home, you sitting on the couch, and it's after dinner and you say, hey, I, I want to talk to you. Oh, Lord, what's this about? Well, listen, let's sit down right here. Let's sit down right here. So I happened to be on your phone and I saw a message that I felt was inappropriate. Oh, why you was in my phone? See that? Hey, you got no privacy. See that? Here right here what I'm talking about. You don't even trust nobody. All that right there is a defense mechanism. Trying to escape. Fight or flight, he's trying to take flight. You got to understand that. You don't, this is the thing, you don't yell. You don't scream. You got, this conversation got to be had. If the conversation can't be had, relationship is over. Relationship is over. I ain't, I ain't playing with you. Relationship's over. Hasta la vista. Hasta luego. Hasta la vista. C-O-V. Ali. It's done. Finito. You hear me? It's a wrap. Conversation got to be had. And it got to be had respectfully. 
like two adults, point blank period, get the t-shirt, www.tonygastore.com. And point blank period, it got to be had. So now you get through the conversation, you, you let the person come, come back down, man or woman, just go both ways. You let them come, hey, listen, listen, like I said, the message was inappropriate and that's unacceptable. That is 100% unacceptable. So listen, it's this video that I seen that I want us to sit down and watch together. So what's first step? Conversation. What's next step in the rehabilitation process? We're gonna watch a video or we're gonna read a book or we going to mymentor.life and we hiring a coach to have a couple session and we're going to talk with a third party a neutral party who could just call it straight down the middle how they see it from the outside looking in so we're going to have that conversation and that right there so now with this first offense you may say okay uh, conversation the book or the session the what have you and then you need a commitment from your partner meaning you need your partner to say you know what I didn't see anything wrong with it but you see something wrong with it so I'm going to respect that and I'm never doing that again you need to hear from your partner that they're going to change the action. I got to watch my time because I got to, uh, I actually supposed to be on a call right now, but it was a call to buy some tickets for a, a race car thing that my wife be watching on Netflix, the Formula One. She know everybody's name, know all the drivers, know all the teams. And so they, 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 they coming down, they, they, they going to be near us and I was going to get some tickets, but I, this right here more important. I got my time to throw it off this morning. And so, this is the thing. You having this conversation, and you may say, okay, I got this here commitment. I got this apology. If you don't get that, then the conversation's not over. You can't go into forgive and forget. You can't go into forgiveness because your partner has not admitted to, their, to the wrong offense. If they won't admit to it, that means it's going to happen again for sure. Now, when they admit to what they did and they acknowledge your feelings, they acknowledge how you feel about this and you knowing you, you are being fair or they're being fair because you might be the offender, you know this is a fair ask, then you need that apology. You need the commitment to never do it again. Like Jesus said, go and sin no more. You need that commitment. And off that one offense, that may be the end of it. That may be the end of it. But let's say later it happened again. Now, see, you're going to see some things here. If you notice that your partner always got their phone face down, they always hiding that code. When they get to put that code in, they turn their body all the way like this right here. You know there's some hiding going on. So when you know it's some hiding going on, that's a red flag because in a relationship, there should be transparency. It should be an open book because listen, y'all smelling each other boo-boo. You know, y'all listening to each other gas, y'all breath stink. You know, y'all growing old together. Y'all sharing bills, y'all sharing bacteria, y'all having kids. There should be transparency in a relationship. People go to Holland about privacy and all of this right there. Privacy mean you own the toilet by yourself. That's what privacy mean. You own the toilet by yourself. And in some relationships, somebody nasty enough and they knows it's stronger. They standing there with their partner while they partner on the toilet. I don't heard of that. You see it in movies. That, that ain't me. That ain't my wife. We ain't all that now. Privacy, you in the bathroom by yourself. That's privacy. Privacy not 
no lock phone without your partner knowing the code. That's not privacy. That's secrecy. Your partner not being able to see you in your DMs while you answering DMs. That's not privacy. That's secrecy. So if you're in a relationship and you committed for marriage or you married, it should be transparent for a healthy relationship. It should and and who you are should be should be the same. So the way you talk to your friends, the way you talk to your parents, the way you talk to your coworkers, your partner should know that side of you. You shouldn't be two different people. I mean, yeah, you you may talk to people differently, but your partner should know that. That shouldn't be a surprise to them on how you talk and how you go back and forth. Like you shouldn't have to hide your messages. And so it should be open if you want a healthy, long lasting relationship. And this coming from a successful 14 year marriage, that's going to be until death does us part. That's where it's coming from. This ain't coming from one of them broken relationships where the man cheating or the woman cheating and you're unhappy and you're just hanging in there because the church hitting you across the head with the Bible about divorce and you're just hanging on by a thread. This ain't where it's coming from. This coming from success. So if anybody arguing with that point right there, you won't fail you. You, you, you want to, and, and you up to something. You up to something. Hit dog holler because it shouldn't be nothing to hide. My wife got all my passwords. She go read all my DMs. She go read all my Facebook messages. She go read all my text messages. She go read all she want to read to know everything about me and what I'm doing because I ain't got nothing to hide. I ain't got nothing to hide. The only time I have something to hide is if her birthday coming up, Christmas coming up, and I'm talking to a shopper. And I'm trying to get a certain gift and I don't want her to know about it. That's the only time I'm going to text and delete. Other than that, she could, she could know about anything. And you know what? Because I have that open door policy, she don't check my phone. When I'm texting, she's not looking over my shoulder. She's not asking me for my phone. She, she don't go into my social media. She don't read my DM. She don't do none of that. She... I done changed my password and she don't have the password, but she got, she got my code to my phone and so she go on my phone and she could open my Instagram, she could open my Facebook, she could read my messages, but she never asked me for my phone. I stay up later than her, so it ain't like I'm sleeping, she, and she up, you know, and that ain't the case. So one thing I realized is that when you have an open door policy, it promotes trust. It builds trust in your relationship to where your partner don't have to be on edge. They don't have to be snooping around. They don't have to be sneaking. So now you don't have to get to the forgiveness, the forgive and get forget stage. And so this is what you have to understand. When you put this right here in place, now you have your rehabilitation process. So on this one, conversation, apology, Piece of work, meaning book, course, video, coaching session, did some work. The dry the point home. You move on. You forgive and, and forget. When I mean, when I say forget, what I mean by that is you don't remind your partner of the offense. You don't continue to remind your partner of the offense. You forgive your partner. And you move on. Feel what I'm saying? So understand this right here now. So now you come to a place to where let's say this happened again later. So you may have step two on your rehabilitation process to where, okay, now this is a conversation. And now this is the work now is more severe. We doing four sessions with a coach or a counselor, we going to a relationship retreat and we exchanging all passwords. We exchanging all passwords to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. We exchanging all passwords and, and we levying a final warning. Listen, this right here, I understand you human. We made stupid choices. You going through this, you going through that. I understand this and that and the third and the fourth, but listen to me. This right here ever 
happen again. Don't even worry about nothing. Don't even worry about coming back. Don't worry about nothing. Like we all the way done. And try me like a base if you want to. Because I'm hoping by now you know I'm about uh, I'm with it all. So it'll be a wrap. And so if you don't want this, then let me know now that you don't want this so that we can stop wasting our time. Because we both wrong and we don't have time to waste. See, you got to go into the Liam Neeson voice. I will find you. And I will kill you. You seen uh, Taken? You know I'm Taken with Liam Neeson, the movie. Call Taken, watch the movie. Watch the movie if you ain't watch the movie Taken. Watch it on YouTube. And you're going to see how Liam handled that thing. The way Liam handled that. That's that's that got to be your voice right there. See what we what we do too much as humans. We want to yell. We want to scream. We want to throw stuff. We want to cuss. No, in this in this rehabilitation phase, in this forgive and forget phase, you need to be direct. It need to be like a hot knife cutting butter. Uh, knife cutting hot butter. It need to be shoo, just a clean. To where your partner know they sitting there like, all right, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I, I get it, I get a hundred percent, hundred percent, and at that point, listen, you got to remove your heart from the situation because your heart will deceive you. It come time where you got to use your mind. You got to use your mind. You can't get caught up in feelings. You can't get caught up in all the emotions. And you got to be logical. And you got to say, okay, listen. I got to respect myself. I got to love myself. And I got to make sure he or she respect me. It got to be known. Like, this got to be direct. It got to be real. And so that's where you got to get to. And when I say forget, that means do not remind him or her of the offense. If you got to keep bringing it up, that means that you are not doing the work to heal. Or it means that the offense was too severe for you to get over in this relationship. And that means the relationship is over and you need to be strong enough, man enough, woman enough, adult enough to go on about your business, to move on with your life because the offense was so great that you cannot heal from it in their presence, in this relationship. You need to cut your losses in the relationship and move on with your life. If you crying six months later, a year later, you still bringing it up. You don't have the emotional intelligence to have a thought that reminds you of what your partner did and not address it with them a year later, then you're not doing the work or it was too great of an offense for you to still be with that person. Understand that point blank period. Ain't no if, ands, and buts about it. Ain't no if, ands, and buts about it. You got to understand that. And so listen, the thing about it is we hold on to stuff. See, when I say forgive and forget, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, my son, that's sword. So y'all forgive me. Y'all done heard me. If y'all watch my videos on YouTube, you done heard me. No, it got a W in there. It is a sword. That is a sword. Not son, it is a sword. They put a W in there for a reason. So now listen to me. This is a double-edged sword. So what this here is, what you have to realize is forgive and forget. It could go one or two ways. One way mean you forgive and you don't remind them of the offense again, as I've said. The other way mean you forgive them and you forget them. The offense will determine which forgive and forget you about to do. You getting ready to implement which one is going to be. So. You got to know, like, if my wife yell at me, that's a forgivable offense. If she curse at me, that's a forgivable offense. 
if it happened 10 times, relationship over. If my wife cheat on me, that's not a forgivable, that's a forgive and forget you, you know, and vice versa. But see, here's the thing. It's caveats and nuances to this here situation because you're in a relationship. So let's say you in a relationship and you get cheated on. You get cheated on emotionally. When you evaluate the offense, if you see that you were distant, you were standoffish, you were condescending, you were rude, then you see that you played a part in pushing your partner away. And your partner didn't have the maturity to just break up with you or the strength to just break up with you so they look for somebody to kind of pick up the slack. And so when you evaluate that and you, and you see where you played a role in that, then you may choose to stay in a relationship and to forgive them for cheating and to recognize where the role you played in pushing them away. And you may say, well, well let me do my part better on this second time around because I feel like we have potential. I feel like we can work. Let me do my part better. Let me do what I'm supposed to do. And if this happened again, I get cheated on again, it's all the way over. It's absolute 100% route. You see what I mean? But that's down to the person. And see, and we as humans, we don't get the right to tell somebody else to do what they're, with their relationship because they, we don't know the depths of their relationship. We don't, we don't know you know, the intensity of that relationship. We don't know what they were facing internally, externally. We don't know. So that's what we have to realize. So when you look at this here and you start to see, I'm sorry, I'm getting ready to go get my hair cut. And you start to see, now you're able to decipher between what's a deal breaker and what's forgivable. And then you come to this place to where you have your process. So, so here's the thing. You may say, okay, you lied to me. You lied to me. So I'm going to need your password because I don't trust you. And we need to rebuild trust. And now where my trust was given to you now trust needs to be earned now if you have a partner that's going to go out of their way to get a second phone to keep their phone at work to keep their phone in the spare tire of the trunk to use their friend phone to cheat listen they deserve everything bad that's coming to them and they're going to get it that's what they looking for that's what they're going to get you don't have to stalk somebody. You don't have to play Blue's Clues or be Sherlock Holmes. You don't, you should not relegate yourself to a prison of insecurity because now you're ruining your life. You're losing the zeal and the zest for life. And so now that's hurting you. So you implement this but you're giving them enough room to show you who they are. And when they get messy and, and you fair warn them, you let them know directly, if I ever hear of or catch you doing this, it is a wrap. I don't care if we have 10 kids. I don't care if we have 10 businesses together. I don't care if we own a million apartment complexes i am gone nah we splitting everything down the middle and then i'm taking you for everything i can in court everything that's under the legal law i'm sticking it to you for wasting my time for trying me like a baser and that's that point blank period and so listen to me you express that so that they know so that if your partner go out their way to do something stupid, now you got to live by what you said. Now you got to live by it. And that's where your heart got to be. You got to know. Like when you're in a relationship, you got your heart in a relationship. 
you all the way in, but your mind got to know that at any given moment, you got to be ready to lead. Because if they don't believe you a lead, you're going to get taken for granted. You're going to get disrespected. That's human nature. Humans always going to get, get over. Go to go buy you a car. The people have you paying for two cars in one. If you don't know no better, if you don't know the true value of that car, if you don't know what the market say, if you ain't Google that car and look to see how much is being sold all around the country, if you ain't looked up the miles, the, the Kelly Blue Book, the Carfax, then people have you paying for two cars. Then people have your interest rate tall as shite. People will take advantage of you if you don't know you. If you don't know what you want, and it will be the people closest to you, your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your cousin, your niece, your nephew. You hear me? Humans are flawed. So you have to protect you because ain't nobody else going to protect you. Ain't nobody else looking out for you. And you will learn this in life because you got family members that, that try you. You got friends that try you. You got people that expect from you, but don't reciprocate to you. You got people that will take from you, 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 and never once ask you, what do you need from me? You done seen this in your life. So when you're in a relationship, you just can't lay everything down and just trust and believe all in human nature you can't do that you got to have a level 14 years of marriage and my wife ain't never had a woman call her phone and text her phone but she still don't give me complete 100 percent like there's no possibility. She still don't act like there's no possibility in the world that I will never cheat on her because she know I'm a human and she know humans are flawed. So although she trusts me and although she believe and although she hope, she still is, is realistic. And the same with me. Even though I treat her like a queen, I know she is a human and I know that I don't know everything about her, every aspect, every area. I don't know how she will handle every form of temptation. So I love her and I trust her, but I also have to remind myself that we both are humans and only God knows. And now we know personally who we are and what we will and won't do, but we know that our partner doesn't know every facet of our brain and air and our thoughts and our feelings. We know that. So you can't get lulled to sleep to where you just got the wool over your eyes to where you're not paying attention to signs to where you're not looking at red flags that have sirens and are just glaring in your face. And so be cognizant, be present, be aware, be alert. And if things are not being done the right way, it's going to be exposed. You don't have to go digging and searching and doing all of that and stressing yourself out. It's going to come to the light. The, the negative things, the, the bad things that's done in the dark, it's going to come to the light eventually. So what you have to know is that, listen, if I'm not appreciated, if I'm not respected, if I'm taken for granted, it don't matter if I've been married 50 years, I will pack my stuff and leave. Because at the end of the day, I got to love me at the end of the day. That's the approach you got to have. And when you have that approach, you're going to have the utmost respect in your relationship. When you come in and you just lay down and you're willing to get treated any kind of way, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get treated any kind of way. And so now listen, in this here, in your re rehabilitation, these things that your heart needs, and it has to be realistic. You can't be like, you know what? Since you did that, since I seen that DM, you got to do a triathlon 
and you got to come in first place and you got to run with me on your mind and swim with me on your mind and after that I want you to walk on the Golden State Bridge and, and I want you to hang one leg over the side to prove to me you love me it got to be realistic so if you say if you get cheated on physically or emotionally and you say we finna have 12 sessions with a counselor or a therapist or a coach whatever you want to go to that's non-negotiable you cannot enter that relationship if that right there is not accomplished and it was so many times I have seen people get done wrong in a relationship and they will email in for a session and they may do one session and they need four sessions to 12 sessions and they do one session and then they partner play this sweet role and like they got it and they understand and everything changed and then six months to a year later they coming back well Tony you know we didn't you know everything was fine for like three months and then six months and then the next thing you know I caught them cheating again you didn't do the work See, had he had to sit and talk to that coach for 12 sessions, he would have heard the words he needed to hear. He would have answered the questions he needed to answer. He would have had the paradigm shift that he needed to have. But because you allow your partner to skip the work, to not do the work because you didn't want to push too far. You didn't want to push too hard because really you scared to lose the relationship because you scared for your Facebook status to have to change. You scared for your haters to get a laugh. You scared for they ex to get them back. So you skip the work and you don't drive the point home and then it come back to haunt you later and it blow up in your face. So that's what you got to understand. So forgiveness in a relationship is going to be absolutely necessary. But you have to know your deal breakers. You have to understand and rank the severity of the offense in your mind, based on your references, based on your life, based on your history and biography. And then you have to have a plan of action on how you're going to correct this behavior how you're going to rebuild and reestablish the trust before moving forward. And if anything is skipped, the relationship is doomed. If you don't do the work, the relationship is doomed. If you don't put implement those things that need to be implemented, whether it's sharing an account, whether it's exchanging passwords, whether it's putting on find my phone on your on each other phone, creating accountability if you don't do the work it's gonna come back to haunt you because some people don't want to change some people just want to get better at cheating to get better at lying some people they make it a game and it is their purpose in life it's their challenge in life because they're unfulfilled they're lost they broke busted and disgusted emotionally and mentally and so they have fun being a dog being a liar cheater manipulator stealer and that's what they do that's what how they get a rocks off and if you got that type of person you got to recognize crazy early you got to realize it and recognize it early and get on top of it and you cannot at any point one year 15 years 30 years at any point you got to be willing to leave you got to be willing to leave if a person that you're with is not willing to change and to grow. Hey, this is Tony Gaskin, Power Hour. If you made it here, God bless you. I'll be back. We'll talk soon.